controversial bank deposit tax is back on the table as well. And this time around, Parliament is considering a tax of under 1% on all deposits. Joining me now to sort all of this very confusing, these developments, uh, sort them all out, Peter Schiff, the CEO and Chief Global Strategist for Euro-Pacific Capital. And Peter, uh, let me just start off the bat and, and ask you, um, you know, the country has agreed to this solidarity fund, but I can't quite tell if this is a solution that the EU wants or not. As a result, let me ask you, is it a possibility that the EU make good on its threat to kick out Cyprus? Well, anything is possible. And, you know, I think the, the outrage over this deposit tax is really about the honesty of the approach. Because if you think about it, citizens all around the world have been, ha have been suffering a deposit tax. I mean, think about the United States. How long have we had 0% interest rates in the United States? How much money have savers lost who keep their money in the bank because they haven't received any interest on their deposits all these years? And what about prices? Because the Federal Reserve is doing all this quantitative easing, food prices are going up, gas prices are going up, so deposits are losing value. At least with the tax in Cyprus, it was more honest. The government was up front and saying, we're going to confiscate your money. Well, we're doing it secretly, and I think the, the honest approach is better. Well, you know, a lot of people have been making the parallels between what's been happening in Cyprus and, and what, as you mentioned, has been happening here in the U.S. But this levy on bank deposits, this is what is causing a storm and is really getting people upset. Are you concerned about any sort of precedence that this could bring into the industry, into Europe, and what it could do to banking confidence as a whole? Because when you start to have runs on banks and runs into ATMs, as we're seeing visuals of, and people concerned about uh, whether or not they can pull out their money, it starts to create panic. Yeah, I think, you know, it could be a wake-up call. You know, I happen to own an offshore bank in the Caribbean, Euro-Pacific Bank, and our business since the Cyprus event is up about 150%. So a lot of people are looking for safer places to park their money because people are starting to think about whether deposit insurance uh, is really all that it's marketed to be. You know, here in the United States, uh, the FDIC insures, I think, $8 trillion in deposits, but it only has $25 billion in reserves. So that's really not a enough to do the trick and you know my bank in the Caribbean is a 100 percent reserve bank and we don't make any loans the reason that the Cyprus banks are in trouble is because they made the mistake of loaning money to the Greek government so I think people are looking for banks that don't need deposit insurance because they don't have a risky balance sheet and I think that's why my bank is getting more popular and maybe the same thing is happening at other banks uh, that have a far more conservative approach to banking because they don't have any deposit insurance see the problem with deposit insurance is that the banks that have it act recklessly yeah. and then they put their deposits in jeopardy. My, my accounts aren't insured, therefore I don't take a lot of risks and I think my uh, bank customers appreciate that more than ever right now. Yeah, but you know what we're talking about here, uh, Peter, as well, is a contagion effect. You talked about the biggest problem that, uh, that, that was had was that it has exposure to Greece, but we can say that about Italy and Spain and Portugal and you can list basically every other European nation that's out there. What sort of Pandora's box could uh, become unfurled if we do see the problems in Cy Cyprus not resolve itself in a timely and expedient manner. Well, that is the risk. You know, we have this fractional reserve banking system throughout the world where banks only retain a small percentage uh, of their actual deposits and they rely on this government guarantee to stop the runs because customers are confident that the bank's not going to fail uh, no matter how small its reserves are or how reckless its loan portfolio because of the government. But if people start to, to question that, because remember, these Cypriot accounts, they were also insured. And if people start to think, well, if it can happen in Cyprus, it can happen en anywhere. It's not, you know, what happens in Cyprus stays in Cyprus. That is a concern uh, that, that depositors all around the world, not only in Europe, but here in the United States, start to get worried. Yeah. And they go to the bank to withdraw their money. And if a significant number of people try to do that, the banks don't have the money. Yeah. And that's the concern. You, you worry when you see on the cover of the Wall Street Journal is another bailout for insert country here in Europe. In here, we've done that before. Uh, talk about what could happen there has been talk about what could happen in Italy with it, that country imposing a similar tax on deposits how likely do you think that something like this um, could be mimicked over across different parts of Europe which we know are still having a very hard time coming up with uh, their own solidarity measures 
Well, I don't think, I, I think, I do think Cyprus was an extreme example. It's an offshore money haven. Uh, you had tremendous amounts of deposit, money on deposit there from all around the world, Russia and Great Britain. And the, the, the banks were paying much higher rates of interest there. I mean, much higher than you can get in continental Europe. Even with the haircut, Cypriot depositors would still be ahead of the game. But I think in those other countries, they're going to resort to a more insidious deposit tax, uh, inflation. I think you're going to see yeah. uh, money printing all around the world, and that is going to destroy the value of bank deposits. I think savers need to realize that no matter what form uh, it comes, uh, savers are going to be sacrificed on the altar of stimulus, and you're going to see a big decline in the value of deposits, even if you don't lose some of your deposits. They were talking about a 6, six or 7 percent. 10% tax in Cyprus. Right. I think inflation is going to take much more than 10% of the purchasing power out of bank accounts all around the world, not just in Europe, but here in the United States. I think that's why Let's, a lot of savers are pulling their money out of banks. They're buying stocks. They're buying real estate. They're yeah. buying precious metals because more people realize that if they hold on to currency and leave it in the bank, it is going to lose a lot, of value. a lot of value. Right. Let's talk about the United States. And what we did not see today, Peter, was any sort of market reaction to this because there's a belief, well, on one hand, that uh, things are going to get resolved in Cyprus. On the other hand, we are the best of the worst markets that are out there. Um, you know, at what point could that turn on us? Because that, that scenario can't survive forever. Well, we're, we're not even close to being the best of the worst. I think we're, we're, we, we might be the worst of the worst. It's just that a lot of people haven't figured that out that yet. We still have uh, the perception that the well, U.S. is a safe haven. we are growing unlike Europe. And so we benefit from that. We are growing unlike hmm? Europe. We are growing un, uh, unlike many other parts of the world. And so you are seeing... I don't believe we're growing. I don't, I don't believe we're growing at all. I do believe that we're borrowing a lot of money and spending it, and we're counting spending borrowed money as economic growth. But I think if we were more honest about how high the level of inflation is, you know, in order to get our meager economic growth, we assume there's no inflation. Uh, but if you if, if you don't take the government's numbers at face value, if you assume the fr inflation rate is not one and a half percent a year, but maybe four or five, six percent a year or more, then we're not growing. We're contracting. We've been in contraction for years. And that makes a lot more sense to me, given the huge collapse in the labor pool. Uh, you know, I think I think it makes a lot more sense that the economy is not growing. All we're doing is spending more money for the things that we buy. And so it's a sh it's a charade. It's a facade. It looks yeah. like we're growing, but we're actually contracting. Fueled, and, I, and I think that's going to get a lot worse as time goes on. Yeah, fueled by a lot of this money printing that the Fed is doing. Peter Schiff, always great to have you on. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Well, we're going to switch gears and give Lou Dobbs a chance at this. If this tiny Mediterranean island collapses, will it take the entire Eurozone along with it? Joining me now on his take, host of Lou Dobbs tonight is Lou Dobbs. I saw you some taking some notes. I know you want to jump in here. Thoughts no, on, what Peter no. on what Peter just said? I, Peter, I, <clears throat> I always enjoy listening to his, uh, his perspective on the world. Uh, he, he said that Cyprus, you know, could happen anywhere. He did later acknowledge that it was an extreme uh, example of banking and uh, uh, sovereignty gone wrong. Right. Uh, here's the reality. Uh, Cyprus is now learning that it made some very serious mistakes. It tried to take the Eurozone, uh, the European uh, Commission, uh, the International Monetary Fund, and the ECB to the brink. Uh, they played like fools. That's how they got in this position. They were reminded of that by the Russians who rejected a, a bailout program. The Cypriots have behaved, as I've said, foolishly, irresponsibly, and they're paying a price for it. Uh, they have no choice but now to go to Brussels and with their hands out, contrite, and say, you uh, you know, you will dictate the future of this island. A million people behaving as if they could take 500 million people in the European Union and slap them, uh, you know, uh, upside the head. It, it, it's irresponsible. What Peter Schiff had to say, I mean, I mean come on. I, I mean, I, I love listening to him because he has such a, an adventurous and imaginative mind. <laughs> the, the fact is, the best of the worst, I can't imagine why Peter would want to even live in this economy. My God, why not go off and, you know, live over the, uh, you know, put, put his residence on top of that offshore bank and make sure he manages it well. <laughs> Have a good time. This is an absurdity. This 
is, if anything, right now, the United States, we have a market for which there is a premium for security mm -hmm. uh, and for responsibility. Yep. And as, as we listen to all of these sort of um, what I call the neocons of, uh, of economics talk nonsense, the reality is that we're getting better, we're getting stronger, we are solidifying progress, and Cyprus will be a, won't even be a footnote uh, a month from now. Right. The European Union is asserting leadership uh, and it is coming to its senses about how to build a better future uh, for what has been a very difficult, I mean, think of the complexity of what they are managing there compared to what we yeah, are doing. Absolutely. It's, you can't even compare them. We've seen strength in the dollar. The markets That's are right. near at an all-time high. We're seeing recovery in, in different pockets of this economy. Mm -hmm. But what we still see, you, you say that Cyprus may just be a footnote. And we it will be. Remember this. It will be. But what is not a footnote is the, the pattern that has existed mm -hmm. for the last probably well f since probably the creation of the eurozone but certainly over the last sure. five years uh -huh. uh, all of these nations the pig nations portugal uh, ireland italy greece spain on the brink mm -hmm. of collapse and the eurozone comes to yeah. rescue them and the global markets are held hostage and then they get yeah. rescued because we know they will and then here we go again well you, you say here we go again we're seeing a, a, a continuation of the effort to consolidate uh, the progress that has been made in the European Union. Uh, if you look back over the last 30 years of what the Europeans have achieved, you have to give them great credit. Uh, when you look at what we've all achieved, whether in Europe or, or in the United States, since 2007 and 2008, mm -hmm. uh, we've come a long way. So Federal Reserve, I mean, uh, you know, what I call the CNBC shorts, like uh, you know Peter Schiff, I mean, they're drumming up business here. They're not analyzing a, a, a situation, a financial or economic crisis. He's trying to drive business to an offshore bank for crying out loud. I'm trying to keep very clear this. One, our markets are far more secure than they're given credit for, uh, and I assure you investors are paying a premium in that market for that security. Uh, we're going to see the European Union, uh, the, the 17 finance ministers of the Eurozone will meet Sunday. They will approve the deal, which will be less than, we are told at least, uh, less than 1% uh, confiscation, because we should call it what it is, confiscation of those Cypriot uh, uh, deposits. Yeah. Uh, and is this sufficient? Certainly not, but it's a beginning, and that's uh, that's a lot better than where we were a week ago. And the markets will roll on. I, I think these markets will continue strong and move uh, forward. They're stable and they're growing, and I'm talking about up in markets. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, hallelujah. Yeah, we like that. We like that. We like the enthusiasm and we like the confidence because that's exactly what we need in moments like this. Lou Dobbs, thank you very much.